Today we're going to go over an FPNA project where you will roleplay as a financial analyst at Shin Financials Inc. You are required to conduct an actual versus budget variance analysis given the financial information provided for actuals and the budget. After you conduct the analysis, you will then be required to dig in even deeper and draft a commentary for the material discrepancies. You will be required to dig in to the financial information and also quantitative information to draft your commentary. This case is available for download on my website and I highly encourage you to try it as this will give you a very good experience of what to expect in an FPNA role. And with that said, let's begin. The very first task is to consolidate the actual and the budget information into the categories listed here. So we have to find out exactly which accounts roll up into which categories. And in order to do that, we need to leverage the index tab, which has a table that tells you which accounts roll up into which financial statement category. And in order to bring that in into our actuals and the budget data, all we have to do is create an additional column. I'm going to call this index and highlight it blue. And then bring in the index detail by using the xlookup function. So I'm going to X look up the GL account within the financial statement category. We're also going to do the exact same thing for the budget side as well. I'm going to call this index and then replicate the X look up function that I just did. And now I've successfully tagged all the accounts into a corresponding financial statement category. Now what you're going to encounter doing this part is that there are going to be some where you will see an error. The reason why there is an error is that they are not included within the index table. A good way to check for completeness is to set up a filter and then filter for the hashtag NAs. And I can see that the only account that's not currently registered is the recruitment cost. So I'm going to copy this and then add it at the bottom here. And I can see that the GL code is 503. And if I look at the other GL codes, all 503 accounts are related to professional fees. So I'm going to tag this to professional fees as well. Once I've done that, I can see that this was properly tagged. And just for completeness, I want to filter the budget section as well and see if there are any accounts where an error was returned. I can see that there are no matches, so we now have a complete tagging of the financial statement category. And now that we have a complete list, we can now begin drafting the dashboard. We first want to bring in the financial information for actuals and the budget. And one thing to note here is that we only want to bring in information for the Shin Consulting Inc. entity. So when we set up the sum is function and we're bringing in the gross amount, based on the financial statement category. We also have to make sure that we add a condition to filter for the entity that we're analyzing. So the entity, I need to make sure which cell that value is in, which is in cell C3, and then the financial statement category. And I want to do the exact same thing for the budget side as well. And the entity is C3 and the financial statement category is B12. This is a very simple process and the more experience you get, all of this will come to you naturally. And now that we have the actuals and the budget figure, we can now calculate the variance where we're simply going to calculate actuals minus budget for the revenue items. And then for the expense items, I actually want to do the opposite. And this is so because for the variance impact, we want to show what the impact is to the net income. So if the actual expenses is higher, we want to show an unfavorable variance. So a negative number. And then lastly, for net income, we now have our variance figure here. And then for our variance percentage, we're going to divide the difference by the base, which is the budget. And 
and we now have our dashboard. If we quickly go back to the home tab, we can see one of the objective is that we want to draft commentary for material variances. Material variances would only be if they're above a 5% variance. So if we go back to the dashboard, we can see service revenue is material, compensation is material, and general and administrative would be material. All the other items would be good to just leave as is. So now let's quickly take a look at the compensation and the GNA variances first. Now there's a lot of data here and it is very difficult to absorb if we just simply analyze these two data sets alone. So what I actually recommend is create a new tab and I'm going to call this analysis and I'm going to consolidate the information from actuals and the budget. So for the account, I'm going to use the unique function to bring in the unique values of the accounts. And I'm just going to quickly sort this in ascending order. And again, it's always best to just double check with the budget accounts as well, as there may be accounts and actuals that may not be in the budget. So I'm just going to copy this here and then remove uh, remove duplicates. And then for the index, I'm going to use the XLOOKUP function again, just to bring this in more smoothly. And then for the sum ifs, I'm going to bring in the gross amount based on the account and the entity. So the entity is going to be Shin Consulting Inc. and the gross and the account will be B6. And then for the budget amount, we're going to do the exact same thing. Bring in the amount based on the account and the entity. Like this. And the reason why I'm structuring this data set here is so that I can now create a pivot table. I'm going to create the pivot table right below. So existing worksheet over here. Now using this pivot table, you'll see exactly why this is very useful and how to analyze data very efficiently. So I'm going to first bring in the index into the row section and then the account into the row section and lastly, the actuals and the budget amount into the values. Now, one more item I'm going to add here is that once you go to the pivot table analyze, you can create a field or a different set of item. I'm going to go to a calculated field and I'm going to call this difference. And the formula is going to be actual minus budget. I'm going to press OK. And now we have the differences. And when we dig into the compensation, and we sort the differences from largest to smallest, we can see exactly what's causing the material variances that we're seeing here. And the biggest variance that we can see here is actually vacation. We see that salaries is also causing a difference. However, the percentage difference is much less than what we're seeing in vacation. And if we actually go back to home, we're provided some details where it says, Shen Financials Inc. had a 10 year celebration where many employees were provided benefits, including an event and a surprise vacation. So we can see that this is a one-off cause of why we overspent in compensation. We also do have a 90,000 variance in salary. So we can also mention in addition to higher overall wages due to likely higher headcount. And this is something that we can always take time to investigate in a future period. Next is general and administrative. So let's collapse compensation. And if we take a look at GNA, we can see that office supplies we've overspent by 94,000. And if we take a look at the details that we were provided again, we can see that we bought an additional office space ready for use in 2024 February. So we likely started purchasing a lot of office items so that we could start migrating and moving in to this new office space. And this is enough commentary for these two items. And now let's quickly look into how we would assess the commentaries for service revenue. Service revenue is a bit unique in the sense that we're provided the transactional data 
for the service income for actuals and the budget. We can see that our service revenue is broken out by three different products, which is financial consulting, bookkeeping, and contracting. So let's create another tab here, and I'm going to call this service revenue, service revenue analysis. And I'm going to start by looking at revenue. So let's start by bringing in the actuals figure where we're going to consolidate the amount based on the service. So I'm not too concerned about date at the moment, but if we do find ourselves having to dig into that, we always can. So we're going to sum ifs into the budget figure as well. We're just going to bring it in like this. And then the difference would be calculated here. So now let's also bring in quantity and then lastly, let's just calculate the rate. And the rate we're actually just going to back calculate so that our numbers come out to be more consistent. So now we have the difference in rate, quantity, and total revenue. So quantity variance and rate variance. This is how you want to break out the information so that the stakeholders have an easier time understanding exactly why we're favorable. We want to explain them how much we've oversold in volume and also how much more we've earned per volume. And the way we want to calculate this is the standard quantity variance and rate variance formula where actual quantity minus budgeted quantity times actual rate. And then for the rate variance, we want actual rate minus the budgeted rate times the budgeted volume. So we can see that overall for financial consulting, we have a quantity variance of 350,000 and also a rate variance of 71,000. However, for the other two products, we actually under earned per product. However, we sold more and as a result generated more revenue. And then as a result, we can do total and summarize the information this way. So we're favorable in service revenue of 448,000. And if we actually go back to the analysis where we look into our service revenue, We can see that the main cause of difference is actually service income in addition to an education income. And it ties to the 448,000 difference that we see here. So we know that this analysis is accurate. And we've realized this favorability as a result of mainly quantity where we've oversold and generated an additional revenue of 386,000. Whereas we've also realized a favorable rate variance of 62,000. So we can say here, Sales, service, revenue, favorable, primarily driven from higher volume of products sold. And if we take a look back, we can see it's mainly from financial consulting, specifically financial consulting services. And now we're done the exercise. We went through the process of adjusting the source data so that we could roll up into our dashboard. And we've constructed our dashboard and then conducted additional analysis to identify and comment on material variances. This is really just a surface level of what you can expect in an FPNA role. And I really hope that this video helped you gain insight to what you can expect in a similar position. I just want to say again, this file is available for download on my website, and I highly recommend you to try it as it does give you very good practical experience. If you have any questions, always feel free to message me and I'm going to be providing more educational content, so follow for more.